When I was 21, I wasn't concentrating. And I got locked on a bus in one of the biggest and busiest cities in the world, in Istanbul. It was the height of summer, and I was on there for six hours. It was rubbish. Amazingly, uh, I wasn't alone. There was one other person smart enough to get locked on that bus with me. Um, and a couple of years later, that man, Benjamin Harriman, would go on to become my business partner. My name's Arthur Kay, and I'm the CEO of BioBean, a green energy company that turns waste coffee grounds into two advanced biofuel products, both a biodiesel used for powering urban transport systems and a biomass pellet used for heating buildings. I'm going to talk to you today about using my perspective as a designer and an entrepreneur to confront the real-world challenges posed to us by one simple fact, that we're now living in the Polycene, a phrase I use to describe the age of the city and the fact that for the first time in the history of humanity, we have become an urban species. I've always been fascinated by cities, hubs of social and economic power that drive change by concentrating skills and resources in one place. I studied architecture at University College London, where I began thinking seriously about them and looked at solutions to all sorts of different challenges which had been driven and concentrated and brought to the fore due to rapid urbanization. For instance, I looked at how an excluded aging population could live alongside primary school children uh, in a Montessori school come old people's home in a derelict site in central London, looking at intergenerational equity and the transfer of skills and knowledge between young and old. I looked at how a fictional inhabitant of London in 2050 might retrofit his Victorian townhouse, trying to uh, counteract the barrage of information he's getting from news corporations warning of terrorism and climate change, economic instability and foreign incursion. But most exciting for me, I began thinking about waste and how we could reimagine urban supply chains. I came up with the idea behind Biobean whilst designing a coffee shop and coffee factory, as you do at architecture school. Um, and the conceptual leap here in terms of addressing this was simply to look at the waste stream produced by this building and turn what was hitherto seen as a problem on its, on its head. I decided instead of looking, looking at it and seeing waste, I saw a resource simply in the wrong place and set about looking to address this challenge. I discovered that coffee was being wasted everywhere, pouring out of office blocks, out of coffee shops, coffee factories and restaurants. In fact, over 500,000 tonnes of waste coffee grounds are produced each year in the UK, sent to landfill and incinerators at enormous economic and environmental cost. I teamed up with Benjamin Harriman and uh, we set about building a team um, and looking to design the technology to put this uh, idea into, into uh, make this idea a reality. So in almost two years of working on this, where have we got to? <coughs> As the first company in the world to industrialize this process, we've designed and developed and protected some pioneering technology. We've, uh, uh, we've built our first factory, as you can see, uh, 20,000 square feet, capable of processing over 150 tons of waste coffee grounds every single day. We've raised several million pounds in financing, but most importantly, built a fantastic team, from leading technologists and uh, engineers and scientists to strategists and financiers, now getting on for almost 20 people. We're closer than ever to change the world by reimagining urban supply chains um, than, than ever before. And what I want you to imagine is that every single piece of rubbish could be redesigned in this way. Imagine a world where challenges become opportunities. The main thing I gleaned from my architectural education was around the importance of urban designers and the central role they'll continue to play in the coming decades. I began thinking of it not as a profession, one set aside for architects or green entrepreneurs, corporations, governments, or even eco-warriors. It's a chance for all of us, for all of you, to become urban designers. And the Polycene, the age of the city, gives us this opportunity. And I don't really think we have a choice here. Let me tell you why. 
When my grandfather was born uh, in 1925, the world's population was predominantly rural, with only 15% uh, living in cities. A generation later, that had already doubled to 30% living in cities when my father was born in uh, the 50s. When I was born in 1990, that had already crept up to 43% of the world's population living in cities. And by 2050, when I and most of the people in this room will be in their 60s, over 75% of the world's nearly 10 billion people will be living in cities. This is a truly extraordinary situation. We have become an urban species. Let me put that in perspective to you, what 75% of the world looking, living in cities looks like and the rapid urbanization that that's how, and how rapidly that's going to happen. That's the equivalent of building a new New York City every single year. Not just once, but seven times. Seven new New York cities added to our planet every single year for the next 35 years. An additional 250 new New York cities. If global growth is going to be both sustainable and equitable, we need to address the rapid urbanization that is coming. And importantly, understand that the challenges facing us are interconnected. From housing to our mental well-being, from waste to infrastructure, from water scarcity to our economic prosperity, these are not global challenges, but interconnected urban ones. And it will fall to urban designers to solve them. And we can only solve them when we begin to understand them. Let me give you an example of this. We currently think of climate change as a global challenge. In fact, we normally refer to it as global warming. However, if I told you the very simple fact that over 80% of carbon emissions come from cities, and in fact, of that 80%, a huge proportion of it comes from just 35 megacities with populations over 10 million, I think we'd all think of climate change and global warming very differently. And I could give you similar stats and figures with regard to things as disparate as obesity and mental well-being. So why do we think of these demonstrably urban challenges as global ones? We need forward-thinking, design-led, practical solutions that first identify and then address the real-world challenges facing all of us. And if urban designers can effectively do this, they will become the most influential group of the 21st century, responsible for maximizing the greatest opportunity of our generation, the Polycene, the age of the city. And the solutions are already here. They're at our fingertips, with truly exciting examples of urban design emerging all over the world. For instance, this is a, a bus in Beijing, a straddling piggybacking off the existing road infrastructure, straddling over the traffic, allowing congestion to pass over it, and moving hundreds of people from point A to point B at a fraction of the cost of traditional rail infrastructure and with a fraction of the emissions. Or this, a delivery drone in Chicago, able to navigate that city both vertically and horizontally, and again, delivering parcels and other bits and pieces at a fraction of the cost and the fraction of the emissions to conventional delivery methods. Or this, uh, alternative to slums in uh, Santiago ch in Chile. Each of these units cost just a couple of thousand dollars and allow the inhabitants to retrofit it as they uh, move up the economic uh, ladder. Solutions to urbanism rarely come from, from utopian ideas. Instead, they come from practical, on-the-ground, design-led solutions. And all over the world, in every major urban center, people are coming up with solutions to these challenges. And we need to empower those urban designers. We need to shift our basic attitude towards cities. Instead of viewing them as grand, permanent structures, fixed systems not open to change, instead we should view a city as an organism, with its system open to being retrofitted and reformed. I'm not suggesting we design cities from scratch. That's neither proved practical nor popular. 
Instead, I'm an advocate for densifying and retrofitting, for piggybacking off the existing infrastructure, for innovating and enhancing. And I'd like to think that BioBean, the company I run, which turns waste coffee grounds into advanced biofuels, and some of the other solutions I've showcased here today are tangible examples of that. We have become an urban species, and this is currently viewed as a problem, rather than the way I see it, which is as an enormous opportunity. The challenges of the 21st century, those of overpopulation and waste, energy, our physical and mental well-being, housing, gender equality and climate change, these are not global challenges, but interconnected urban ones. And if urban designers can bridge this gap, they will become the most influential group of the 21st century, because in the Polycene, in the age of the city, a localized solution can have a global impact. The Ephebic Oath, a pledge sworn on becoming a citizen in ancient Athens, ironically gives us a mission statement for the Polycene and the 21st century. We shall leave this city not less but greater, better, and more beautiful than it was left to us. Each new human that enters this planet has the capacity to create, to innovate, to disrupt the status quo, and to make their city greater, better, and more beautiful than it was left to them. That is why urban designers will be so influential in the 21st century. And that is why all of us, why all of you, need to design tomorrow, today. Thank you.